Hi everybody, my name's Kay, you're watching Amidst the Grey, and today I will be resurrecting the Formative Dex Tarot Tag. Let's do it. Formative Dex, what are they? So this tag was originally created, I believe, by Kasha. Her channel is Tarot Map, and as well as Patrick from The Living Wheel. I believe they did this together. So your formative decks are the ones that essentially shaped your practice, your experience with Tarot or with Oracle or whatever system it might be. They're kind of one's personal cardamantic building blocks or something like that. For my formative decks, I have gone over my library very carefully just because it was interesting kind of going back to the beginning of my practice and really contemplating how each deck helps me move forward in my in my cardamantic or even divination in general kind of that process and once i went over everything i came up with four tarot two oracle and one miscellaneous because it's more of a study tool than a than a deck although i have used it in readings and it was very insightful but i i typically use it as a study aid but it was fundamental in helping me um revive an interest that i had when i was younger that kind of fell by the wayside and but but um, my miscellaneous deck kind of brought that back into the into the picture for me so seven decks in total and i will start i think with um the Oracle just because I began with Oracle. Um, tarot came, it didn't take too long <laughs> for Tarot to come into my life after Oracle, but Oracle did technically come first and it's kind of what set me on this, on this road of reading cards. So um, to honor that I will start with Oracle, then I will do the Tarot and then I will do the little miscellaneous deck. Welcome to the portion of the video where I am not in my car, which is a first for this channel. I had a thought. Is there a formative books tag? Like a tag for those books that shaped your practice, your spiritual practice, your divination practice, your just kind of your outlook on life, maybe as a whole. Is there a tag for that? Because if there isn't, I might make one. Okay, now on to the decks. Me again. <laughs> just really quickly before I start showing you cards, this is just a pop in to tell you that anything that I feature that is currently available, I will link um, in the description box. One of the items, I'm fairly certain, at least right now, is out of print. There's one that I am very iffy on, but I think the others are all still available. So I will double check on those two that I'm not sure about, and if they're available, I will link them, and if not, then I won't. <laughs> okay, now I'm really gonna show cards. The first deck I'm going to show you is, appropriately, the deck that started it all. This is the Hedge Witch Botanical Oracle by Ciolo Thompson and published by Llewellyn. This absolutely gorgeous little 44 card oracle comes in a really fantastic magnetic box, which I absolutely love, as well as a ribbon for ease of getting your cards out. The backs of these cards are some of my favorite backs, I think, of any deck that I own. And this guidebook has forever spoiled me for how amazing 
a mass market guidebook can be. As you can see, it is in full color with um, bigger versions of the artwork as well as extra artwork from Cielo Portrayed. And in the back, there is a really fantastic section where she includes recipes and all these various other practices that can be done by the season, which of course is something that I just absolutely love. There is a lot of negative white space in the cards, which really makes her absolutely gorgeous watercolor illustrations just pop. The cards have a simple keyword at the bottom as well as the official botanical name. The cards are rather glossy, but they are rather flexible and they are easy to shuffle. That's the Headswitch Botanical Oracle by Ciolo Thompson. Oracle number two is a very special one. This is the deck that introduced me to the wonderful and ever-expanding world of independently produced decks. This is the Synchronicity Oracle by Kathy Nichols and is available, I believe, on Etsy as well as her shop. It comes with this really nice, simple little keyword pamphlet as well as a card of spreads, which you can use with the accompanying die that is included. You roll the die and whatever number comes up, you can try the corresponding spread. One of the things I love about this deck is that it is larger for an oracle. It's 77 cards, which was kind of a no-brainer for me. The art in this deck is very whimsical and very brightly colored, which aren't really things that I always gravitate towards. But there was something about this one that just pulled me in. I just found it completely and utterly charming and it was very reasonably priced and I wanted to try an independent deck and I thought for my first one that this would be a really really great choice. One thing to note about this deck as well is that there are some cards that correspond to the major arcana in the tarot for example strength right there there is also a magician card and an empress card and a priestess card and there are correspondence to the majors in the tarot in this deck. There are also a few shadowy keywords which I really liked because it covers the whole spectrum which makes it a highly versatile deck to use for journaling or other purposes. And that's the Synchronicity Oracle by Kathy Nichols. For my first formative tarot, it's only right that I show my very first tarot that I acquired for myself. This is the Smith Waite Tarot Deck, the Borderless Edition. It is published by US Games. The backs have the dark green color. The bordered version that is available has the lighter green color. The artwork is familiar being an original scan, I believe, of the 1909 Pam A. It does contain Pixie's original font. These images are familiar. I won't go too terribly on for very long about them, but it is a classic. Even though I don't really read RWS particularly anymore, there is something to be said, I feel, for having one in your collection or your library. That's the Smithwaite Borderless Edition Centennial, published by US Games. Formative Tarot number two is a very special one. This is the Tattoo Tarot Ink and Intuition by UK-based artist Megan London, and it is published by Lawrence King Publishing. This deck is a fantastic value. It comes in this amazing little two-piece hard box with a really fantastic little guidebook that is in color and is very numerologically oriented, which is really fantastic for me. And also it has a sewn binding, not stapled, but it's sewn. And the cards are extremely high quality. Everything about this deck is quality. And I think I only paid about 15 US dollars. For this deck. I recommend this to a beginner who wants to get into pip decks 
but who wants something for a reasonable price because this fits the bill really great. Even though this deck is very pippish in orientation for the miners, there are nods to um, RWS imagery, but it maintains the traditional structure of the older decks with Justice at 8 and Strength at 11. As you can see, the art is very tattoo-like, <laughs> hence the title. One of my favorite tarots that I always keep handy is the Tattoo Tarot Ink and Intuition by Mega Munden. It's difficult to know where to begin with formative tarot number three because there are just so many things to say. This is the incomparable one-of-a-kind Pagan Otherworlds Tarot by Usi Studios. This is the deck that introduced me to how incredible production of a tarot, or any deck for that matter, could be. The backs deserve a close-up because look at that. Look at that. These backs are incredible. The cardstock is a linen. And one thing to note is that they can be a little on the slippy side when you're shuffling. And in my experience, I've had a few cards go flying across the room. That aside, it is a fantastic deck. The miners are very pippish, but they are inspired by the RWS system. And there are nods to the scenic miners within the the pips of this deck. The guidebook for this tarot is sold separately and a little bit on the expensive side, but in my opinion, it's worth every penny. The writing is beautiful and there are keywords included for each card as well as some close-ups of the artwork featured on the cards. And this deck does feature an extra card, which is the Seeker card. It also includes a set of holographic Luna cards that depict each of the moon phases. I personally don't include these in my deck, but rather I use them on my altar as moon phase markers. And this is the exquisite Pagan Underworlds Tarot by Lucy Studios. Formative tarot number four entered my life when I realized how much I love pip decks but did not really jive with traditional Marseille artwork. This is the ancient Italian tarot published by Lo Scarabeo. I did not know about the world of Italian decks until I watched a video from Kelly at the Truth and Story where she featured this deck and my whole world just kind of blew this deck features minors from the Avondo deck and majors from the incredible Soprafino. So it's a mishmash of sort of two decks in one. I believe the quartz are also Soprafino. But this was the deck that introduced me to the incredible world of Italian decks, and I have since acquired a few. And that's the Ancient Italian Tarot, published by Lo Scarabeo. It just wouldn't be right to do a video on formative decks without including my numerology oracle slash study deck, published by the Library of Oracles. It has a really fantastic guidebook and comes with a really great box but I keep it in this little velvet bag that is forever permeated in its every nook and cranny by cat hair. This deck is special to me because it brought back my love of and fascination for numerology. And it actually, in the end, helped me formulate my own understanding of numbers as it relates to tarot as a system. Something I love about this deck is that it features three cards for each number, zero through nine. And the three cards represent a number in three different forms. It's inhibition or repressive state. It's exaggerated or over the top state. And then it's neutral state. 
pictured here, the card on the left shows the two in its inhibited or repressive state. The middle shows the equilibrium of the solution and the right shows the exaggerated or over the top or agitated state. This guidebook is really where this deck shines. It features a whole section on the cards themselves and the descriptors of all of the different aspects of each number. But then in the back, it includes a bit on personal numerology as well as exercises you can do to compare your numerology and how you relate to the numerology of others. It's really fascinating and there are st still a lot of material in this book that I have to go through. There's some personal relational numerology there. It's a fantastic deck. I wish they would bring it back, but it is out of print currently. That's the Numerology Oracle slash Study Deck by the Library of Oracles. There they are, my formative decks. I hope you enjoyed watching that as much as I enjoyed making it. It was actually a really great process just getting all the stuff out and looking at it and holding them in my hands and having fun and reflecting and yeah, good times. I think for my next video, I might try and conquer the only 10 decks tag for 2022 because I think that would be something kind of interesting to revisit every year just to see what's changed and what's the same. But yeah, I think I'm going to start working on that maybe. And then maybe first a no buy check in just because it is almost mid month. And I probably should do one of those just for my own personal accountability. So, okay. Until next time, take care and be well.